Hi, my name is Jason Young and I'm an undergraduate at Cardiff University and at the moment I'm doing a summer internship with Dr. Vincent Knight and in this video I'm going to talk about selfish behaviour in queuing systems. So the first thing to define is what we mean by a queue. In general, this will be our queue where the customers wait and this will be our work centre where they get served. You can either refer to these as customers or, as we're approaching this problem from a game theory perspective, it will be referring to them as players from now on. Here's just a quick example of a queue. The players will have an inter-arrival time, the time between the arrival of the previous player and theirs. So he has an inter-arrival time of one minute. He waits as there is someone already in the service centre. Then the next player comes in with an inter-arrival time of two minutes, as the black previous player arrived with one minute. And he is also waiting, as the first player has not finished his service yet. The first player has a service time of two minutes, which means how long he'll be in the work centre. After this two minutes, he will then exit after his service is complete. The next player then will enter the work centre and begin his service. You may ask where we're pulling these numbers from. This is a distribution graph of roughly mapping a exponen negative exponential distribution. These bars here roughly correspond to the probability of getting a certain time. So you can see here, this bar here is roughly at 20% and that says we have a 20% chance of 3 minutes. And similarly, this bar is saying we have 13% chance of getting 10 minutes. So now we're going to have a look at a little example under selfish and social conditions, which I'll explain when the example begins. So we have three players, each with an inter-arrival time and a service time, listed here. And these numbers we'll be using. This is an example of a system under selfish behaviour, which basically means a player will be looking out to reduce their own cost. This is the value in time of ice cream, or how much a player will value waiting for an ice cream. A player, each player can expect to wait one time unit. So with date equal to zero, our first player arrives, and as there's no one in front of him, he simply enters the work centre. Now when our second player arrives at uh, 0 0.25 time units, this player is still in service. So he looks at the queue in front of him. He knows that the expected time is one time unit. So the, there's one person in front of him. And as he does not know how long the person in front of him has been in the system, he can only guess at the amount of time you would have to wait, which would be two time units one for the person in front of him and one for himself. As this is less than the value of an ice cream, he enters the system. The third player then arrives at 0.75 when both, pe both of the previous players are still in the system. As there, is other, as there are two people in front of him and there is himself, his expected weight is three time units. So as this is greater than the value of ice cream, he simply skips the queue. Here we have the summary stats for this particular system. As you can see here, the first player only has his service time, but the second player has the how long he had to wait for the first player to finish, plus his own service time, giving him a rather large cost of wait or cost in time. However, the third player skipped. He only has the value of ice cream that he lost by skipping. So in this system, the average cost would be 1.75. So now we're going to take a look at the same system under social conditions, which means that there's, there's central control, which is attempting to reduce the average cost for each player. What do we mean by central control? This number here dictates how many people must be in the system before the queue is skipped by any new players. Let's look at this example. At date equal zero, the first player checks the number of people in the system, zero, against the policy one, and enters the system based on this. However, 
Now when the second person arrives, there is one person in the system. So due to our social policy, he is forced to skip the queue. And similarly with the third player, he also skips. So let's take a look at these summary statistics. As the second player no longer had to wait, his cost is reduced to simply the skip cost, the value in time of ice cream, giving us a reduced cost for the system. This is a rather small example of a queuing problem. These can be solved in many ways using Markov decision processes, routing games, or as I've chosen to do, a simulation model. I'm going to demonstrate my simulation model using the same parameters we have just seen. Okay, taking a look at this um, simulation, this is my program it running in Python. So here are the parameters for our example. The, inter the average inter-arrival is 0.5 time units. This here is the average service time, which is 1. Also, we only have one server in the queue, and the value of ice cream was 2.1. This, the last number here, is the amount of time we're going to run this simulation for. So let's just run that now. Okay, we can see here the selfish policy is 2. What the program has done is taken the, these three numbers, formed a little bit of maths, and turned the value of ice cream in time into a Q length. So this number here is saying that there should be two people in the queue and then you should skip. The number we're mostly interested in is this value here, which is the average cost per player. So down here is a little bit of code that would output all the player results into a CSV file. So we're just going to do that now. Now let's take a look at the same system, but with our social policy inputted. So what this number here is telling it is, don't calculate the time you should spend in there, but listen to us instead. We are no longer interested in their opinion. As you can see, the cost here has been reduced by entering a policy length of 1. And it's quite a significant reduction, just even for this small example. We're also going to output this data to a CSV. And that's the simulation model that I've built. We are going to show a few graphs which illustrate this example a bit better. So if we have a look at this graph here, we can see that it's average cost against the length of our policy so here we're saying if there's one person in the queue skip, if there's two people in the queue skip, and so on. We can see that it's slowly increasing. The average cost is getting much bigger as the policy increases. And if we would talk in terms of selfish and social, this would be our selfish policy at 2. This would be our social policy at 1. So now what we're going to do is take a look at a slightly more complicated example with different parameters. This is an example for slightly more complicated parameters where you can clearly see the point at which the policy minimizes the cost, which in this case is at 11. But if we were to continue this graph along, the selfish policy is all the way over here at roughly 30. And that's all I wanted to say, hopefully giving a better idea of the impact of selfish behavior in queuing systems.